What's going on guys? Today I want to apply a technique or a tactic that we've used on something else in the past to something different and I am very interested in what you guys have to say because basically today's video is all about fleshing out what I believe is one of the strongest elements of having a good strong presence but I'm not entirely sure that that's the case and I want you guys to help me flesh out my theory a little bit better. All right, so as I've been talking about presence for the last six or seven months, especially with the guys who are part of the Odysseus undertaking, as I'm interested in talking more about presence for you guys, because like we talked about in the last video, which if you haven't watched that yet, go watch that, about the fact that presence is the end game of style for men. We're interested in dressing better only in as much as it contributes to a stronger presence. So we're gonna talk about that. And one of the things that I think is crucial that I think a lot of times we end up getting confused for confidence is the concept of sincerity. Now, sincerity, I'm willing to admit that this may very well be a bias on my part, especially because I can think of a few different examples of men who aren't necessarily sincere. In fact, they would be described as the opposite of sincere, but they do still have a good, strong presence. And so I don't think that this is kind of the bottom level or the main principle, but it's diving down a little bit deeper. But let me tell you what I mean when I talk about sincerity. Those of you guys who have followed me for a while know that one of the things that I have the most disdain for is irony and not necessarily like good comedic irony or the appropriate use of irony, but the idea of living an ironic life. And before you think that, well, nobody does that, there are plenty of people who do that. And I would say that irony is one of the key concepts of the philosophy of postmodernism. And postmodernism is one of the strongest philosophies that exists in the world today. It's the idea that we're meta, that we're above right and wrong, that everything is relative, that things like morals or aesthetics or anything else can all just be subjective and it's all just based on what you wanna do. And irony comes into that because all right, take hipsters for example. The way that they act, the way that they dress, it's all intended to be ironic. And what I see as the underlying thread of irony or this lack of sincerity is cowardice. Because if you think about it, when you live an ironic life, when you don't sincerely hold fast to something, when your entire philosophy is based on expedience or convenience or circumstances, then that means that you are perfectly able to adapt to avoid ridicule, to avoid having your feet held to the fire, to avoid having to actually stand up for something because it's all just relative. And relativity, whether that's moral relativity or aesthetic relativity or philosophical or financial or whatever else it may be, the problem with relativity being your sole driving factor is that it leads to two big things. Number one is narcissism, and number two is mediocrity. And that perfectly typifies so much of the modern man. I don't think that it would be possible to find a society in which there are more men who are more mediocre or more men who are more narcissistic. I think a lot of times we think that our narcissism and our mediocrity are somehow mutually exclusive, like that the mediocre can't be narcissistic because that's only for the elites, or that those who are really narcissistic somehow can't be mediocre because they wouldn't allow themselves to be that way. But the reality is, is that we live in a time, I mean, look at things like body positivity or the somehow embracing of like norm core in our clothing or somehow the idea that I don't want the things that I watch or the th books that I read or the things that I listen to to be aspirational, to be noble, to be better and to inspire me to be better. I want them to reflect me and who I am and what I am and where I am now. I mean, can you be any more narcissistic than that? That you legitimately want the best authors, the best filmmakers, the best creators of art that we have in a modern culture to not create imagery or stories or things that move and inspire, no. We want them to create things that celebrate how average and lame we are. That is complete narcissism. That I don't want to watch somebody who's better than I am because it makes me feel worse about myself. Instead, I want somebody to falsely pat me on the back and tell me that I'm a hero 
that I'm the best that society can aspire to and that my mediocrity, my averageness is as good as it gets. That is so narcissistic. And all of that comes back from this idea of relativity. And if you're sincere about something, then you can't afford to have a relativistic approach to life. Whether you're sincere about your moral beliefs or you're sincere about the clothing that you wear or you're sincere about your work ethic or anything else because at some point that is going to come up against convenience or expediency or relativity. At some point your morals are going to be tried or your work ethic is going to have to actually be put to the test or the other things that you're sincere about whether that's the love for your partner or how badly you want to actually pursue a goal, at some point, that sincerity is going to be tested. And if you're not sincere, if you don't have the desire to actually overcome that expediency, that relativity, and hold fast to the things that you're sincere about, then you're not gonna get there. You're not going to achieve greatness. You're not going to overcome mediocrity. You're not gonna supersede average. You're not going to ever become any better than what you actually are. Sure, you may become more narcissistic. You may fall deeper into that and you may have that cognitive dissonance of thinking that, well, I grew up my whole life being told that what I am now is average and I'm supposed to be more, but I don't want to feel bad about who I am. I, I don't want to feel that way. So rather than changing who I am on the inside, I am going to change the story that I'm being told as far as what can be expected of me and what true greatness really is so that that narrative fits my mediocrity. I don't think that there's the possibility to have strong presence in that. I don't. I don't think that a man who defines everything about him with a lens of relativism is capable of holding fast to something, of having other people want to follow him, of being able to rebel when he needs to rebel because the things that other people are insisting that he does are not things that are in his best interest. I don't think that it's possible to have a strong presence without sincerity. Now, the examples that I can think of that counter something like that is when you think of guys like, a really good example of this is Deadpool from the Marvel Universe. Deadpool is not a sincere guy. In fact, he very much personifies the entire philosophy of postmodernism, of snark, of relativism, of expediency, and Deadpool has a strong presence. He's entertaining, he's charismatic, he's funny, he's somebody that a lot of comic fans or people who just happen to watch the movie will think, will see him and think that, well, yeah, he's a cool guy, you know, he's interesting. But at the same time, I think that he is sincere about some things. And so maybe it's not that sincerity needs to be applicable in every single aspect of your life, but in order to have strong presence, especially as a man, you need to know who you are and what you stand for. And in order to do that, you need to have that defined as something that's not relative and it's not something that can change based on the circumstances, but it's something that you hold fast to. And tying it back to the importance of presence is obviously that's what you need in order to have a good strong internal presence but if you want to use that sincerity if you want to use that internal presence to benefit the world around you especially other people in the world around you then you need to be able to signal that and tell that kind of a story through your external presence through the clothes that you wear your body language your posture the way that you speak how confident you are in your language so many other variables about your external presence. I know that this is a little bit off, not like totally way out in left field compared to the stuff that we normally talk about, but it's a little bit different. And I wanna know what you guys have to think about this. How do you feel you fit into a world of postmodernism and moral and philosophical relativity? Do you believe it's possible to have a strong internal presence and to be aspirational if you're not sincere about something? Do you believe that it's possible to not fall into the traps of mediocrity and narcissism when you live in a world of irony and snark and relativity? Or do you think you have to supersede and rise above that? So I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say on this. Leave me a comment below. Let's flesh this idea out and I will talk to you guys on the next one.